There was a year in RuneScape when you could do just about anything and not get banned. Scam, abuse bugs, and even bot. This is because things were so bad inside Jagex that the company was just months away from potentially closing its doors. Today, we'll explore one of the darkest periods in RuneScape history and the unfortunate update that saved the game. This all started in 2011, when RuneScape got one of the game's most loved updates. The return of the wilderness and free trade. For the first time in over three years, you could kill other players in the wilderness and trade valuable items to your friends with no restrictions. This was, of course, an amazing update, but along with it came a huge problem. Part of the reason the wilderness was made safe and free trade was removed three years prior in 2008 was because the game had a huge botting and gold farming problem. By the time Jagex decided they would be making these drastic changes, over half of the player base was made up of bots, programs that play the game for you. Many of these bots only existed to farm more gold that gold selling websites could then sell. Removing the wilderness and free trade removed this problem almost entirely, but it also removed some of the game's most loved features. So, returning these features in 2011 would bring a big boost of returning players, but at the same time, an even bigger boost of bots. Every passing day since the wilderness and trade restrictions were lifted, the bot problem would grow exponentially. In a leaked company memo, it was shown that by the second quarter of the year, the bot problem had grown so much it was approaching its highest level ever again. Players on fan sites began boycotting Jagex and canceling their memberships in an attempt to get them to address the problem. Complaints absolutely dominated every social media platform they had, and DDoS attacks on Jagex's servers had grown tenfold. The problem had grown so much that Jagex estimated 60% of their players were now bots, and they knew that number would only continue to rise. It was so bad that they even believed that community sentiment on the future of the game was worse than when they removed the wilderness and free trade. Luckily, they had a solution, but it would be part of the chain reaction that would nearly destroy the game. But first, let's discuss today's sponsor, Crumb Store, which makes these awesome RuneScape figures. They're super smooth, super heavy resin casts that are painted using a combination of airbrushing and hand brushing. When you hold one in your hands, you can really see and feel the quality. They all have five stars for a reason. Now, I'm gonna tell you right now, they're selling out pretty fast and they're only made in small batches. This is the first restock they've done since last Christmas, so if you see one you like, you should grab it before someone else does. Now, they're running a promotion on my channel where if you use code NELLO20 at checkout, you'll get 20% off your order. So make sure to use my link in the description and grab one before they're gone. Behind the scenes, the team had been working on a project called Cluster Flutterer, an update that Jagex claimed would break 98% of all RuneScape bots by making it much harder for them to access and modify the game client's code. They even made a big event out of it by nicknaming the project Bot Nuking Day and added a countdown timer to the game's homepage. The day of the nuke, bot makers weren't sure what to expect, but Jagex's prediction was actually right. Overnight, pretty much every bot in RuneScape completely vanished. The online player count halved from around 200,000 to 100,000, and frequently botted items began to rise in price. If this wasn't enough of an incentive to return to the game, the week following the update would include tons of triple XP activities and double, sometimes triple points from certain minigames. And at RuneFest the following weekend after this update went live, then CEO Modmark Gerhard announced on stage that the team had since banned over 7.7 .7 million accounts, and another 4 to 5 million would be banned by the end of the next day. Jagex had seemingly eradicated bots once and for all, but here's where things get interesting. Prior to the nuke, Mark had also said that if anyone could get a bot functioning within a month of the nuke, he'd immediately offer them a job at Jagex. 
So his jaw dropped when just four days later at RuneFest, one of the creators of RS Buddy, Jack Mob, showed that he had already bypassed Jagex's new update and had his bot up and running. Staying true to his word, Mark hired him on the spot, surely so that Jagex could continue their crusade of banning every bot they could. But it turns out, although Jack Mob would heavily increase RuneScape's bot protection, he would spend a lot more of his time at the company working on different projects. Although the bot nuke brought a lot of players back to the game, Jagex now had a new problem. They had essentially wiped out over half of their player base in just a week, and along with it, 10% of their paying members. Which may not sound like a lot, but it was a big deal. Before this update, Jagex had been struggling to attract new players and retain old ones. From 2008 to 2011, they had lost close to 400,000 paying members, and that number only seemed to keep growing. Sure, bringing back free trade and the wilderness was a big boost to player numbers, but not enough to counteract the huge ban wave and years of overall meh content. Over the next few months of 2012, Jagex would try a multitude of strategies to bring in more new players, as well as bring back old ones, and overall try to raise revenue. They'd offer a free two weeks of membership to every new player, do more double XP weekends, offer limited time items to players who redeemed 90 or 100 day membership cards, and they even added a little wheel that we'll talk about later. But perhaps the craziest thing they did was stop banning players entirely. The game was starting to look pretty empty. So empty that not even a single world was full for months. Player counts were so low that without bots, the game looked dead. After the bot nuke, player counts had continued to drop, and membership numbers were quickly approaching catastrophic levels. At their worst, the game was losing 2,000 members every single day. As for why, Jagex simply wasn't putting out the same level of content that they had in the past. The game had become boring or too different for many of its biggest fans, and they were having serious trouble attracting any new ones. Staff meetings began shifting from how can we fix this to if we don't fix this, the company will have to restructure. Essentially meaning most of you won't have jobs pretty soon if we can't figure this out. So the simplest way to stop losing members was to stop banning the ones who were breaking the rules. Jagex turned off their automated bot banning system entirely and told everyone in the company that they weren't allowed to ban any bots without getting permission from the then COO. The only person allowed free reign over banning was the previously mentioned mod Jack Mob. Jack Mob was in a pretty unique position. He was sort of Mod Mark Gerhard's prodigy and was given special permission to really do whatever he wanted, which you'll want to remember for later. But this wasn't the first time Jagex had used this strategy to keep member numbers up. Throughout the entirety of 2011, they had only banned 2,015 members. They figured rather than ban botters who were just using publicly available software, they'd go after the software creators in court and in the meantime, keep pulling in money from those bots' memberships. But when free trade and the wilderness returned, that was no longer an option. Another similarity to 2012 is they had also done things to try and retain members, like double XP weekends, double loot weekends, and even introduced the membership loyalty program, where you'd be rewarded loyalty points for staying a member that you could then spend on auras that gave your character special bonuses, in-game titles, and costumes. But this year, things were a lot more dire. To give you an idea of how bad things were, let's discuss the most damaging glitch in RuneScape history. In December of 2011, a new feature was released into RuneScape called the Money Pouch. It was more or less like a dedicated inventory slot just for gold, except if you died, you wouldn't lose any of it. It was a pretty convenient and well-received feature, just keep it in mind for this next part. So fast forwarding to June of 2012, Jagex released a new minigame called The Crucible. Pretty much immediately, players figured out that they could use it to duplicate gold, but it was patched soon after. Mod Reach was the lead bug abuse curator at the time, and was told to investigate it so they could track down the gold and remove it from the game. As Reach was scanning through session data of players that abused the bug, not only did he see that they spent a lot of time at the Crucible, the Duel Arena started to come up a lot too. Even before the Crucible launched, 
These players were spending a lot of time there, so he sat down with Mod Ash to discuss this, and they realized that the bug Jagex had just patched didn't come into the game because of the Crucible. It was actually a glitch with the money pouch. The exact same glitch from the Crucible could maybe be replicated at the Duel Arena. So potentially, players had been duplicating gold for nearly seven months. Mod Ash and Mod Jack Mob went to go test the bug on an older version of RuneScape at the Duel Arena, and it worked, except it was even worse than they thought. Without going into technical specifics, as I've already done so in a previous video about this glitch, players were able to use the money pouch to duplicate 2 billion gold every 30 seconds at the Duel Arena, and a group of players had been doing this for 7 months. In total, Mod Reach was able to track 16 trillion gold that had entered the game as a result of this glitch but it was likely even more as Jagex's logs didn't go all the way back. This was by far the most damaging glitch in RuneScape's history, even more than the infamous party hat duplication glitch. So you'd assume that Jagex would want to bring down the hammer on these players pretty hard. Well, RuneScape was struggling for members pretty badly at this point still. So Reach wasn't allowed to ban anyone who abused the glitch without permission, and most of the office had already gone home for the day. However, Mod Jack Mob could. So Reach bans the two biggest offenders and puts a little note saying that if anyone has questions, to speak to Reach and Jack Mob. He figured by putting Jack Mob's name on there, he could stay out of trouble. And he was right. The next morning, executives realized how bad this bug was and gave Reach permission to ban more players. But just 200 accounts. No more and no less. That's how much the company was struggling to stay afloat at the time. But you might be wondering what changed? How did Jagex eventually change course and start earning enough money to stop this hiatus on bans? Well, it seemingly all has to do with a little feature you may remember called the Squeal of Fortune. The Squeal of Fortune was a mini game available to every RuneScape player. Once a day or twice a day for members, you could spin the squeal and win a prize. Prizes were things like a few thousand gold, XP lamps, special equipment, and even a grand prize of 200 million gold. You could also get additional spins by spending real world money. The squeal was incredibly overpowered, and for just a bit of real money would give your character an insane boost over players who didn't spend any money. So RuneScape's most dedicated players began buying hundreds of thousands of spins. This was an instant and huge revenue boost for Jagex. So much so that later that year, they introduced Solomon's General Store. A store where you could get unique animations, pets, outfits, and other cosmetics by spending, you guessed it, real money. To give you an idea of how huge of a revenue boost this was for Jagex, let's take a quick look at their financials. By the end of 2011, they had suffered $12.2 million in losses for the year, and their cash balance had gone negative. But thanks to these new microtransactions, by the end of 2012, not only had they made up their deficit, they had earned $12 million in operating profit. As you can imagine, the banning hiatus was long over by then. It no longer mattered that they were at the lowest player count in nearly half a decade and still dropping. It just mattered how much the remaining players were willing to spend. Although it was an unfortunate solution that ruined the game for many people, and is the reason RuneScape 3 is plagued with microtransactions today, it allowed Jagex to stay afloat just long enough to release old school RuneScape in 2013, which we may never have gotten otherwise. Now, if the money pouch duplication glitch piqued your interest, check out the video on the right where I interviewed Hacks Unit about it. They heavily abused that glitch, among many others, and were also behind the infamous Rotten Potato pickpocket. 